I, you have a picture in the book that shows their camp, and you make a comment on the on the photo that everything in their campsite is in perfect order. And everything on the shelf is exactly, exactly right. Exactly right. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> well, that's one of the reasons they lived to tell the tale. Uh, they were very conscious of the fact that every time they went up on one of their test flights, whether it was in a glider or their flying machine, they stood a very good chance of getting killed, which is why they never flew together. They wanted one of them to still be a, alive to carry on with the mission. But the fact that they were c courageous is in itself not quite the whole story. The fact that they were so careful about everything, not flying too high, not, not exerting too much stress on the machine or themselves, of checking every detail before they took off, with infinite patience, infinite care, and infinite intelligence, is the reason they lived to tell the tale. And of course, Orville had a terrible crash at Fort Myer, demonstrating the, the practical flyer, which is the one that uh, really changed history, much more than the one uh, that flew at Kitty Hawk, two, two more years to develop the first practical airplane. And that took place here in Dayton, at, out at what's called Huffman Prairie, which is a cow pasture. And fortunately, it's still there today because it's part of the Wright-Patterson Air Force property, Air Force Base property. And you go out there and it's, it looks exactly the same. And you wonder, how in the world did this happen? How in the world did two men who never finished high school, who had no money except the rather modest income they got, had from their bicycle shop, who had no friends in high places, who had no big time backer, no Smithsonian institution or foundation or great university, and knew nobody really of consequence, and did everything themselves. Every part, piece, they made their own motor. Uh, they developed the skill to create the shape of a propeller. They created their own wind tunnel. They created their own system of little uh, hacksaw blades cut into different shapes to measure the effect of the wind on those different shapes in the wind tunnel, all of which was ingenuity in the extreme. They were doing uh, physics, aeronautical physics, that was beyond what anything being done by anyone at MIT or Rensselaer Polytechnic or the Smithsonian Institution. And how was that? How did that happen? And I think we cannot underestimate the importance of their liberal arts education. A home full of books. Home training yeah. and encouragement from an extraordinary father, Bishop Milton Wright, who was an itinerant preacher. You have a picture of him right here yeah, in the wonderful book. Wonderful looking a, it's man, isn't he? It's an inspiring yes, picture it's a great in and of itself. And I'd, I, I'd give a great deal to have met him. I, well, I kept waiting for the other shoe to drop, and it never did. Right. Because it appears that these folks were as genuine as what you see in that home, on those bookshelves, and their training and their support of one another. Well, imagine they, they had no running water in the house. They had no indoor plumbing, no electricity, no telephone, but a plenitude of books.